All righty, we are live. Alice Kampar, how are you? Doing great, thanks, Mike. How are you doing? Good. Are you ready for some live real estate coaching? I am ready for some live real estate coaching. Awesome, awesome. Absolutely. And we've got a we've got a topic today that is particularly close to my heart, um, and it involves um, approaching consumers um, with a service mentality. Right. And so we're going to talk uh, for about the next 30 minutes about uh, how to approach consumers in today's marketplace. Um, but first of all, uh, just a little background on Alice. Uh, Alice and I uh, have uh, have known each other for a little while now because she is actually a member of our team. That's right. So Alice, um, give a quick bio on yourself so the audience can kind of get to know you. All right. So um I'm Alice Kampar. I've lived here in Dayton since I attended the University of Dayton about 30 some years ago, giving away my age here. Um, I worked in healthcare for about eight years. Um, I was in a, in a healthcare administration when I decided to stay home to be with my family and to raise my kids. So I like to think my second career was being a stay home mom, but I was super active during that time doing event planning of all kinds, um, from conferences to smaller events and things like that. Um, but now my kids are grown and they're starting to leave the house and I'm looking for a career that provides me some more independence and um, in my time and obviously I want to do well in it. So I thought um, real estate might be a good option. And when I mentioned that to two friends, they're were, they were all like, you should totally do that. You've got the right personality. Go do real estate. You'll be awesome. So I find myself here learning real estate. So my third career is getting started. And we are so happy to have you. You have been um, an amazing student to the game, and um, you know you're continually asking asking questions. You're continually uh, coming from a place of, of servitude, and um, you're you're like a sponge. And you know you are very brave to take on this um, this open type forum um, and, and kind of putting yourself out there to help share with others and help others learn. So for that, I am eternally grateful. Well, I've seen your coaching. Um, I like your approach. And so I thought I'd take advantage of it to learn a little more myself. Awesome. So, glad to be awesome. here. All right, well, let's get started. So today's topic is, um, is, is approaching consumers with a servant mentality or a service mentality. And right. um, I took a lot of notes. Um, we're we're going to, we can talk specifically about um, some of the lead categories that we know we're working with right now um, are expireds for sell by owners. Um, we also work with uh, commissions Inc. They support right. our buyer lead generation platform mm -hmm. and um, amongst other things, but those are really, you know, those are really kind of the main, um, they're really the main lead generation sources that we're having conversations with right now in our business. And so, um, you know, the great, the great thing about conversations with uh, leads who have already identified uh, themselves as wanting to buy or sell a home is it's typically, it, 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 I don't want to say it's easy because you still have to build rapport with, um, with those prospects, but at least we know uh, we're in alignment with um, you being a real estate agent and being able to help buyers and sellers and then them wanting to buy or sell a home, hopefully, right? Sometime now right. or in the future. So um, that being said, I want to speak uh, specifically about, let's just talk about phone calls for now, okay? Because we know um, phone calls are a really easy way to scale a real estate business. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, door knocking is, although it is effective, um, it is it is it is not scalable in that you cannot create, um, you know, you, you can't knock enough doors daily to develop or scale a real estate business. Um, and you know, the same thing with mailers. Although mailers, I, I like the idea of of mailing and doing it with consistency. You're still waiting on someone to call you. Right. So I, I do. I really like the idea of, of phone calls because it, it is it's you with a prospect and um, and then hopefully being able to connect and build rapport. So let's right. talk about building rapport, I guess, first and foremost. We know that when we're calling an Internet lead, for instance, that um, the, you, you, when we're making that first point of contact, they don't know us and we typically don't know them unless we, you know, 
well, we don't know them, but we know what we what we have in front of us in, in terms of we know their name, right? We know their phone number, email address, and and typically we know what they're searching for. Gotcha. And if we've done any any other uh, intel as it relates to you know social media, uh, um, and and finding out where they work or what interests they have, you know that's that's just another component that can be helpful. Right. Um, <clears throat> But you talk about coming from a place of service, and the reality of it is um, that's the only place that you're going to be able to connect with consumers uh, in today's marketplace. And you, I alluded to this a little bit in our um, business planning meeting on, um, was it yesterday? It was yesterday we met in the conference room, and I told you that, um, that I, what I was thinking about on, on my drive over in the morning yesterday was that how technology is revolutionizing how um, how how consumers buy and sell, but it also is revolution revolutionizing the way we prospect buyers and sellers. Right, and, right. and and remember when I told you um, we are not as real estate agents, we're not the holders or the keepers of the data any longer, right? Um, okay. Consumers have access to mo most of the data, uh, if not all of the data that we have access to, right? And so, in fact, they have access to so much data that is now become our job to decipher that data and disseminate it to the consumer, right? And so, um, no longer do they, long gone are the days where the consumer is, is, is calling you saying, I want a three bedroom, two bath home, um, it, in Centerville, Ohio, that's uh, between you know three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars with a swimming pool, right? They already have that information pulled up, and they're typically emailing you, right, right about right. setting up a showing, right, gotcha. or or getting additional information, right? So, um, as it pertains to you know uh, some of the stuff that that maybe is still not. Um, uh, full disclosure to a, a potential buyer would be like, you know, motivation or occupancy, things of that nature. So we can still provide uh, a little value, um, but not nearly as much as we can or we could have when we held the information, right? Right. right. So I, I want to talk about that. Uh, I want to talk about um, um, the, some of the notes that I took were, uh, you know, typically when you make a call, um, and you, you know that a consumer is searching for and uh, for a home in a particular area and you know what they're searching for. Right. right. Um, when you're coming from a place of service, um, you're coming from you're taking very much a, a concierge type approach. Right. Right. And, and, and so back to my 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 ride in to work, when I say that we're not the, the holders of the data anymore, that the consumer consumers already have access to the data. Um, then it becomes about uh, then it becomes really more about um, helping make sense of that, right? So helping make sense of the data for the consumer is is that then becomes your job, right, and right. so and, and so you know if a consumer if you're reaching out to a consumer and um, and and you know they have access to the data, then it's more it's your your approach is more questions based, okay. right? So I guess um, one of the things I struggle with is I'm, I'm doing marketing at that time. I put information together, I put it out there, and people follow up on that. So I'm having, I'm struggling a little bit with going from just putting information out there that people like and forward and things like that to going to getting that initial contact made, getting that conversation started, and being in the right mindset so that I can be ready to go when they pick up the phone. Because that those couple of seconds are really important to make that connection. Yeah. So that's what some of what I'm struggling with is connecting with that buyer and being in the right mindset to do that, so that I can be of service to them. So I don't know. Can you give me some more feedback on how to approach that? Like how to get that first impression made? Yeah. And what, what's really cool about um, all the different channels of communication these days is we have an opportunity to make an impression um, uh, through email. Uh, we have an opportunity to make an impression through a phone call. We have an, an opportunity to make an impression through the mail, uh, mm -hmm. through showing up at their doorstep, right? There's all these different opportunities to make an impression. And I would encourage you to take advantage of all of them. And what I mean by that is um, 
let's just use expireds for example right now, right? right? We've talked about this before that let's just say you find a listing in your neighborhood that's expired, right? And you know your neighborhood really well and you really, really want this listing. We talked about this before, how you could um, essentially put together a packet, right? We have a seller packet that includes a maximum pricing guide as well as our 151 steps. Um, you could print out properties that have sold in the neighborhood. You could go to the UPS or FedEx store and get a professional envelope to put right. all that in, attach it to your business card and drop it off at their, their front doorstep. Right. Um, that in-person connection is so powerful. But since we're talking about phones, right? right. Um, and the only reason I say that you should utilize all of the other different channels of communication mm -hmm. is that um, you also have an opportunity to make a warm phone call. And what I mean by that is, oh, hey, uh, we actually got your mailer. Thanks so much for dropping that off, right? Right. Um, that way there's already a connection or, um, or, hey, we got your email. Thanks so much for sending that over. Or, yeah, we, we, we see your videos on social media. You know what I mean? So uh, you're, you're building a resume, essentially. And this is what we talked about in, in, in our meeting yesterday is that I told you while I still think it's viable to make calls, um, you know, from 8 to 10 or 8 to 11 and then again mm -hmm. at, from 4 to 6. Right. But in those times during your downtime in the middle of the day, if you're not on appointments, start really trying to build your digital resume. Okay. okay. And, and what I mean by that is cr when you're creating content, um, so one of the notes I put down here is um, we create, so consumers are searching online for data, right? Right. Um, and, 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 and they're consuming data uh, um, in, in massive amounts right now, uh, right. as much as they can. Video, uh, blogs, all kind, um, you name, I mean, all of the real estate, the major real estate portals, right, where they're searching for homes, they're consuming right. all this data, photos, uh, marketing descriptions, they're consuming all of that stuff. And so since we know that the consumer is uh, consuming data, right, in, in massive amounts, then how do we add value as real estate agents? And so what, what came to me the other day when I was driving in is not only do we have to, we have, have, have to have access to the same data that consumers do so that we can right. disseminate and decipher that for them, right. but we need to be creating our own data, right? right. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, aside from making phone calls and coming from a place of service, the other part of that is creating that digital resume so that when 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 you do make phone calls, um, you have the potential for a warm introduction. Right. Okay. And yep. so and what's great about Alice, what's so great about uh, uh, buyer lead generation platforms is typically you do have contact information. Um, so a phone call, uh, a text message an email or uh, potentially being able to reach out to them on social media. So if you're creating, let's just say like you, you have, you have, uh, let's say you have a hundred buyers in your pipeline right now. Right. And you, right. you have a certain percentage of them that are from each city. What right. if you, what in the, again, so this, I want you to know, this is all relating back to coming from a place of service. Okay. okay. So because you're providing, when you're creating data, you're providing service at the highest level. Okay. <laughs> and so, so what if you, um, what if you said, okay, so Centerville, Ohio, right? I have, I have of those 100 buyers, I, 25 of them are from Centerville, Ohio, right? Right. right. What if you then created a market report for Centerville, Ohio once a month mm -hmm. and you emailed it out to all of the buyers that were in your pipeline? How right. valuable do you think that would be? If if you if you drip that on them once a month, how much how much credibility do you think you would build? Well, yeah, I mean, we need to we have we need to be the subject matter experts. You know, the folks that are buying houses, you know, one for every, you know, when you buy a home, you're likely going to be there for several years. So this isn't something they're doing day in and day out like we are. So yeah, to have that market knowledge, to be able to bring that to them, get it in front of them consistently, would be an important piece of this whole thing. So yeah. I can see that. And so. you, you said, remember, you told me the other day that um, you had you had started to create some videos and you got some good feedback from some of your 
uh, close friends and family members. And I would encourage you to keep doing that. And anybody that watches this or is listening <laughs> to this, um, if you're not if you're not creating content, if you're not creating video, um, your competition is and you're falling more and more behind uh, because yep. what when you create content and you create video, um, this goes back to what I said before, you're creating that digital resume for consumers to consume you, right? Right. And, and so I, I don't want to give you the impression that you can just create anything. You, right. have, you have to create something that will be uh, looked upon as um, something relevant to the consumer in your respective field. Right. And so if your respective field is real estate, um, you need to be you need to be creating market reports. Um, you need to be interviewing local business owners. Um, right. You need to be uh, you need to be uh, going through neighborhoods and 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 and, and going live from a, a you know a park and doing a walk around of of, of potential uh, or, or excuse me of, of landmarks and so forth and so on because um, by doing that you're giving your audience a, ch a chance to connect and align with you in right. a way that a phone call just simply cannot do right and, right. and, and if we're doing all this. And we're doing it consistently. We're creating that that expert, that influence, that credibility, uh, that in the consumer mind share. That so that when we do make a phone call, it's not, "Hey, who the hell are you?" It's, "Oh my right. gosh, I've been I've been watching your videos. I've been right. I've been getting your emails." Gotcha. Yeah, and it is so it is so much it is it's so much better to have a conversation. When you've already got influence or credibility, you know what right. I mean. So when broad, they, yeah, broaden that exposure. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And when they're already when they already view you as the expert on the subject matter, right? So, and it doesn't take. You could create a five minute video and blast it out of a market report to all your Centerville buyers, right? Right. right. Just do that consistently until you know they're going to buy a home. Okay, so how do I overcome that sense of I'm I don't want to impose on you? How do I overcome that? So when I'm talking to a, a prospect and I know that they've been looking on my website and I know they've seen like, several of the houses we've got listed, I'm like, this one would be perfect for them. But how do I overcome that internal voice is like, I really don't want to be a bother. And that for me as a new salesperson is probably the biggest challenge I have is, is getting in that right mindset of contacting them like, hey, I've got something to offer you, but I need some pointers on that, some good suggestions on how to keep the right mindset going for making these contacts with them. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, by the way, that is an epidemic for, for most people it, and it, and it, and it paralyzes people from taking action. And I wrote down this, this piece of paper. Uh, I, I wrote, I wrote calling to get or take versus calling to give. Gotcha. And, and so what I mean by, let me explain that. So what I mean by calling to get or to take, um, I mean that if you are calling an individual with, um, with coming from a mindset of what can I get or what can I take from this individual? In other words, you're calling for a commission. Um, right. You, you um, people, people intuitive, they know that intuitively. Subconsciously, they can hear that in your voice. Okay. And you will, it will be very difficult for you to set any appointments because uh, not only will the consumer hear it, um, but you are not in alignment with who you are as a human being when you're calling to get or take something from, from individuals. Awesome. Okay. Uh, if you call with a, a servant mentality, in other words, how can I serve you, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, right. then you're in alignment with who you are supposed to be as a human being. Right. Right. And, and so like you, you have to remember you're a real estate agent, you're a professional real estate agent and they're looking to buy or sell property, Alice. Right. And so it is your duty to be able to connect with that <laughs> consumer because there is nobody better in this world to connect with that consumer than you. Nobody yeah. more qualified to connect with them than you. Right. And so, and then part, so part of that is that internal conversation that you need to have with yourself um, in, in realizing your, your true worth or your true value as a real estate agent. Right. Right. Okay. I love so, that. so quit, quit calling to get or to take and start calling to give. Right. Do not call to get or to take. Right. Got it. And, and so, and then what you'll, what you'll, what, what you'll, what'll start to happen is you'll start to, 
um, it'll become more, your conversations will become more natural. Uh, just like when you're talking to a friend, right? You never have a problem calling a friend, do you? No, not really. Right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the reality of it is I know what people are going to say is, well, oh, my friends know me. And, right. it, but, you know, it, it, every, no one knows you until they know you, right? right? And so if you're calling and you have something to say or something right. to give, Right. And, and, and we, we are fortunate enough to know that when we pick up the phone to call a buyer who's registered on our site, that they're looking for real estate. Right. right. Then you have something to give. That's right? right. That's you, right. You're not calling to take. No. Or to That's get. Right. So, so and so, you know, what, what I want to preface that with also is that, you know, if we rewind the tape back a little bit and we talk about. Um, you know, not being the protectors of the data anymore. Um, and, and, you know, that is our reality. And, and for those of, 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 of you who don't get on board with um, kind of the, the new era of, of, of real estate and, and what our role actually is, um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm worried about you, you know, number one. Um, but, but, you know, number, I guess there's still an opportunity for you to succeed in this business. And, and, you know, the landscape is changing, Alice, as you know, and, and if we don't change with it, um, our businesses will suffer. And that's why I told you, although I think it is definitely still a viable option to pick up the phone and call buyers and sellers, right. um, I, also, I also think it is equally as important to start building your digital resume. Gotcha. Okay. And, and because consumers are consumer data, uh, consuming data in record amounts, and we right. know that. And right. And so what 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 will happen is if you're not creating the data for consumers to consume, right? Um, you're going to be working for someone who does that for the rest of your life, right? Okay. So you know, start start today, start tomorrow, start making one video a day. Go in and just, I mean, it's so easy to go into your MLS and pull up uh, market. Uh, market reports, right? You can pull up the actives, you can pull up the pendings, you can pull up the solds for an entire month, right? Um, yeah, yeah, you, you can disseminate that or categorize that into price points, right? Okay. To add additional information, right? Right you, right. you can give average days on market, right? This is this is not it's not hard information to obtain, but you can put package it so that a consumer um, uh, who is viewing it it will make a lot of sense and it'll be very pertinent to what they're looking for. Because if you have videos on YouTube right. that say Centerville, Ohio market update or Centerville, Ohio market report, and That's you're something. tagging keywords under your video, right, then right. when, when consumers go to Google and search for um, Centerville, Ohio homes, right. Then, and right. you've tagged those specific keywords then uh, not only will they get the Google search results, but they'll also get Miss Alice Compar's videos, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, which you can also transcribe and make into a blog because let's face it, we know people love video, but people also love to read. Right. right. And those, those, those transcribed videos are rich in, uh, in, in, in keywords, right? That people are searching. Gotcha. And, and so you're just, it, it is like a snowball effect when you, <laughs> when you start to do this, right? And, right, and, right. and because what we don't want to do, Alice, for the rest of our lives is chase business, right? right. It is, it is um, although, it, you know, it has been a, an integral part of my business as I've grown it, uh, calling consumers and prospecting expireds. Um, it is at on some level, uh, I, I, my, I want my phone to ring. You know what I mean? I want the consumers to call me. Right. So that's why I say it is important to you that, you know, you're, you're creating your, your own content and your own data for consumers to consume so that they can align and call you. Right. So you're saying to take advantage of these media sources so that we can drive business to our, my blog and to my, uh, other advertising and get people to reach out to me because they saw this content. Right. Wouldn't, yeah. you, wouldn't you much much rather your phone to ring than you have to call consumers all the time? Yes, that would be great. <laughs> I mean, that's what we all want. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Okay. So get out there with some media, get some videos going um, and be aware of what's what. So 
I need to gain that uh, I need to gain that confidence in that in those resources that I can make available to the consumer. Yeah, to go what they can find because I can generate these reports thanks to our our search engines that we have available to us and all. Right. And, and, you know, this is in addition to continuing to follow up with the buyers and sellers that are coming to you through our pay-per-click advertisements as well. Right. right. So right. it is it, it all works in perfect synchrony together. Okay. Um, and, and so what a, a, a balanced business should look like is 33.3 percent SOI um, okay. or or. 33% SOI, 33.3% outbound and 33.3% inbound. Okay. So, and, and so what you, that is the perfectly balanced business, right? All right. Uh, we have a tendency that, um, you know, when our phone is always ringing as a consumer, uh, the, the people with the impending shift, that is, mm-hmm. that is, um, no doubt starting, I mean, it, it, we're already in it. I believe if you look at the statistics over the last, um, just two or three months, you can see that, um, right. active inventory is up, um, right. um, pendings are down and solds are down. And, and this is the third month straight that you've seen that in our local marketplace. Right. And so then you're going to get tough here or more competitive, more, they, not- they more competitive for the people who are creating the data, uh, right. the people that are creating the content. Um, you will, you will continue to, you will continue to flourish and blossom your business. If you have a lead generation strategy in place, you're going to be in good shape. Um, for those, for those of you who just rely on, um, your phone ringing, in other words, just, you just rely on people calling you and you're not creating any data or content for consumers to consume. And you don't you don't have any outbound strategy uh, uh, or any type of a lead generation strategy right. where consumers are signing up or registering on some sort of a buyer website. Uh, right. The market is going to get very challenging for those people. And 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 what's great about that is we have um, close to a thousand more listings than we do real estate agents right now. Right. Or, excuse me, a thousand more agents than we do uh, listings. Right. And, and, and so what's going to happen is, and the industry does this every, you know, five, 10, 12 years is it top grades itself. And, right. But what happens for those who have some sort of a lead generation strategy or a content strategy in place mm-hmm. is those people, Alice, take market share, right? Gotcha. Yep. Yep. So, and, and so we're going to, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to recession proof your business um, with, <laughs> with all of these different, the content strategies and the lead generation strategies. Um, and they will sustain you through any shift or any, any market recession, because yeah. what'll happen is you will, you will take market share and the people who don't have a strategy in place um, will either quit real estate or they'll have to get another job. Right. 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 No, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm totally in. So I do not want to quit this yet. <laughs> just getting rolling, just getting cooking. So yeah, no, I think, like I said, for me, I'm just, I'm used to marketing where I'm just putting stuff out there and waiting for responses. And it's just, I'm, it's getting in that right mindset. You know, when I do get that consumer on the, on the phone and having that right mindset to be like, okay, let's go, Mrs. Buyer, let's talk now, you know, and it's just, um, just needing that feedback on how to get those conversations rolling in a positive positive way. Yeah. And, and so when, when you're, remember the, the most important thing, see, I, here's my belief. Okay. Uh, right. We see all of these. I mean, you go to YouTube, you go to Facebook, um, you hear it on podcasts. People are only teaching skill set. No one is teaching mindset. So what happens is we have, we have so many people who are skilled and they don't have the right mindset, and and that's why you you like you know what to do, right? You you know how to talk to people, right. and you're, so you're learning the business of real estate. Um, right. But you you still have there, there's still this internal voice inside that says, um, you know, what if this person yells at me, or what if this person, <laughs> what if they don't like me, or right, what if they don't approve of me? Um, right. and, and that is a mindset problem. It's not a skill set problem, right? Okay. OK. And, and so when we talk about calling from a place of service, calling to give something, that's right. how you get in alignment again with who you truly are as a human being. And that's how you communicate to other human beings. Right. 
Right. And so remember, not only do you need to work on your skill set, you need to work continually on your mindset as well. Right. And you know what you said, you were talking the other day about approaching the consumer as though they're a friend. And I thought that was very helpful that that feedback of like, how would you talk to them if they were like your friend? So I need that's the kind of thing I have to grow in, like being able to just forget that I don't actually know you just act as though I do, I guess. Is that right? Yeah, and it's so funny because like we, I'm going to give you a, like, I know this is, it's a little off topic, but it has to do with mindset. And, you know, the the, the funny thing is, and you're not quite there yet, but this will be some good insight to, to when you get there, uh, when you start building your listing inventory is that, you know, people like I talk to real estate agents and, you know, they say, you know, I've got, you know, I've got 10 listings, I've got 15 listings. And they're, they're trying to add in more listings. And the reality of it is, while it is, it is a good thing, you, you definitely want to continue to build your business by adding listings. But the, I, I'm thinking to myself, it's like, well, how many times have you called your seller to have a, a conversation about price reduction, right? right? And oftentimes they don't call. They don't call. They wait for the seller to call them, right? Um, and the, so the quickest way to a paycheck when you when you have listings is, is and they're not selling is to call your prospect your sellers right right prospect your sellers for price reductions okay and, and so the only reason I tell you this is because when it when you go back to mindset right think about you've got kids right I've got kids and, right. and my kids are ten and fifteen now and yours are uh, a little bit older than mine but how did when our kids were growing up we weren't afraid to be firm with our children were we we we. Yeah. And we were being definitely my problem. <laughs> so why? But why were we firm with our children? Because we knew we, what we love them, right? Oh yeah. We we love our our children unconditionally, and we we only want what's best for them. Right. And right. So I would ask that you love your buyers and sellers in that same way. If gotcha. You, because you will have no problem calling somebody if you care for them uh, as much as you do your children. Right. And so and, and, and so sometimes people need to hear the truth. Right. If you don't call your sellers and ask for a price reduction, then shame on you. Right. Because that, that's like letting your children um, that's like letting your children do something that you don't approve of and then never saying anything to them about it. Right. Does that make they're, sense? They're, right. They're stuck in a home that is not selling. Them. Right. And, and, and so sometimes we just need to get out of our own way because, you know, with price reductions um, typically come contracts. And, and, and so we know while we continue to prospect and talk to consumers about new listings, we don't address the listings that we have. And either they sit on the market um, or uh, even worse, they don't sell. Right. So right. And, and again, the only reason I share that story with you is because that that's all a mindset issue. Right. 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 Yep. Right. Yeah. So you, and rather than saying like, oh, if I talk to them, they're not going to want to hear from me that we got to reduce that price. But instead you're like, no, look, at this is in your best interest. Uh, this is this is where we want to get you is in this home sold so you can move on to those next plans you have. So keeping that in mind and approaching it that way uh, would be a better place to be coming from. Yeah. Sure. Right. So what precedes all this, remember, is mindset. Mindset. I, right. I love books on mindset, too. Like there's a book. Uh, Dr. James Allen, As a Man Thinketh. I would highly, highly recommend you read that. It's As a Man Thinketh. Yeah, okay. it is. It is a great book about mindset. Um, it was a game changer for me. Game changer. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, start there. I would love to have a discussion with you about that book. I've read it probably three times. I'll read it again um, at the beginning of next year. Uh, it's one of the books I read every year. All right. So that'll help you get your mind in the right spot. Uh, and and then, then you get your mindset and your skill set in alignment. And okay. that, Miss Alice Kampar, is when you become really, really dangerous. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm about to be dangerous. Not quite yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> cool. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. All right. So well, get I- in the right mindset. Remember, they were approaching these folks as though they're our friends. Uh, get over yourself a little bit in terms of being willing to get out there. Increase their digital presence. So I'm hearing you say, um, and some of the old school methods may or may not be super effective these days, but not to bail on them entirely. Is that right? 
Right, right. The cold calling and so on. Where the shift isn't going to be overnight because I mean, let's face it, um, especially in our area, many of the consumers that live in our area are uh, of an older demographic and they okay. still prefer to communicate in right. person yeah. or on the phone, right? That's okay. <laughs> and, yep. and, and many of them do. And we want to meet them where they're at, right? Because it's right. not it's not the consumer's job to adjust to where we're at. It's our right. job to adjust to where the consumer's at. And why and so that's why I say you have to continue your phone call strategy because many consumers um, they still like to connect on that level. Right. And the only reason I tell you to continue to build your digital resume is because over the next five, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that your digital resume will become more important than any phone call you could ever make. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, I imagine so. Right. Yeah. And we want to be ready for that. That's right. Absolutely. Stay ahead of the curve. Yep. That's right. All right. Hope, so hopefully got you got you got what you wanted out of this. And, um, you know, yeah. certainly I'll, I'll be here for you any other day to answer any questions. And uh, again, I appreciate you putting yourself out there uh, for for this 30 to 35 minutes here. And, and for those of you watching or listening who want to take advantage of the live real estate coaching um, please just go to liverealestatecoaching.com and that will pull up my calendar and uh, I will give you 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, no topic is is um, is out of bounds and we'll be happy to dive into your business. Alice, hey, thank you so much again for joining me Thanks, and, and sharing your story. Thanks, Mike. We'll Alrighty. see you. Bye. Bye.